Good morning, good afternoon to all listeners. Thank you for tuning in to the webinar of today. Uh, today, on behalf of the EOSME Center and on behalf of the implementing partner, the Benelux Chamber of Commerce, I'll be covering the topic of the recent tax reforms within China. Uh, before I start my presentation, uh, I will quickly go for the organizers, the Benelux Chamber of Commerce and the EOSME Center and further introduce myself. The EOSME Center is a project which is funded by the European Union in 2010 to help European small and medium-sized enterprises to get ready to do business in China. The EOSME Center is located in Beijing. Uh, the center has also a network of 470 experts worldwide. The center is also an official member of the European Enterprise Network and partnered with over 270 government agencies and business support organizations in both Europe and China. The uh, Benelux Chamber of Commerce, also referred to as the uh, Benchem, is the most active Benelux business platform within China. Its members, leading companies from the Benelux region, share an active interest in developing trade and business within China. It is also the only Chamber of Commerce which is officially recognized and supported by all three Benelux embassies in China. For more information about the Benchem, I would recommend to visit them at their website. Um, more about uh, my company. Uh, I'm working for Moore Stevens Advisory. Moore Stevens Advisory is a financial advisory firm which is based in China and which is part of Moore Stevens Belgium a member of Moore Stevens International, which is one of the largest accounting and consulting networks globally. Uh, what do we do in China? We provide a wide range of financial services to SMEs in China and Hong Kong. This includes services in accounting, tax, uh, annual compliance and corporate services, such as helping companies setting up their uh, business entity. Uh, we do basically what you expect a uh, accountancy or tax advisory firm in Europe can do. Uh, we do this for European SMEs within uh, the Chinese market. More about myself, uh, I'm Michael Voss. Uh, I'm a manager of corporate services at uh, Moore Stevens in China, and I'll be hosting the webinar for today. Uh, I've been living and working in China since 2011 and ever since have been supporting many small and medium-sized enterprises in Beijing and Shanghai uh, with management consulting services and helping them to set up their business structures as well as advising on uh, their tax structures in the Chinese market. Today we will cover the following topics. Firstly, we will dive into some background to these reforms after which we will cover the three main tax laws affected by recent reforms and changes, namely individual income tax, value-added tax, and corporate income tax. While discussing these different taxes, we will also elaborate on the impact on EO businesses in China, and uh, we'll end the presentation to share our thoughts about these developments. In terms of the background of the recent tax reforms, uh, recent developments in China show that the Chinese government seems to be picking up speed to reform and improve the business environment for local and foreign businesses. On the 21st of December 2018, China's state administration of taxation released the final draft of the individual income tax reform to be fully implemented by the 1st of January 2019 in all provinces in China. The reform has had as an objective to ease the tax burden for lower income earners within China and introduced various new measures in individual income tax calculation and legislation. On March uh, 20 and as well in April uh, in 2019, um, we also have seen that uh, China have introduced uh, uh, various new rules and regulations in terms of uh, VAT in China. Uh, in uh, the 9th of January of 2019, we've also seen um, special reductions uh, that were introduced for SMEs in terms of the corporate income tax within China. Uh, taking into account all these developments, where is this really heading and how will this impact as well European SMEs active within the Chinese market? 
This presentation of today will really give a practical overview of all these reforms. Uh, in our business, we supported many European SMEs within China and have been informing them about all these specific developments. As these developments were relevant to share with our clients in the past, we also like to share these developments and insights as well with you today. We will continue to share with you the key highlights and following give our analysis of how we consider this would impact uh, foreign SMEs within the, the Chinese market. Now we're going to start share, sharing with you the key highlights of the recent individual tax reform, which is one of the most significant tax reforms in China within years. Firstly, we will kick off with the timeline of the IoT reform and dive into the specific changes which are particularly interesting for European SMEs in China. As of uh, October 1st, a pilot program was introduced following the draft amendments to the PRC IoT law, whereas uh, the standard deduction has been increased and tax brackets for tax calculation has been widened. Um, then the final draft to the IIT reform was introduced and a number of amendments including the tax residence rule, IIT calculation methods, itemized deductions, end of expatriate benefits and the annual bonus was further clarified. All of which, will which were taking effect starting from January 1st, 2019. In March of this year, also additional announcements were released. Uh, we will not deal with these announcements specifically, but the most important aspect to know is that its main objective was to clarify IT regulation for foreign sourced income and the position of non-China domiciled individuals. As mentioned, the first reforms came into effect on October 1st, 2018. This pilot program included the change in the standard deductions, which went up to 5,000 RMB per month. Previously, this number was 3,500 RMB for local employees and 4,800 RMB for foreign employees. You can see as a result, the taxable income for all employees was lowered. As you can see, the effect as well for local employees was greater than for foreign employees within China. Furthermore, um, the income tax brackets were adjusted. Uh, on the table of the right, you can see that the tax brackets with the rates of uh, 3%, 10%, and 20% were widened while narrowing the 25% tax bracket. You can also see that uh, these reforms mostly has benefited lower income earners in China. In line with tax regulations uh, of many countries all over the world, China has now introduced a similar concept um, on tax residence. Uh, according to Chinese law right now, a foreign individual will be classified as a resident taxpayer if he or she stays in China for over 183 days within a fiscal year. Furthermore, uh, next to the tax residence principle in uh, relation also a new tax calculation method has been introduced. If a foreigner as well as a local PRC employee um, uh, is deemed as a, a tax resident within China, his uh, individual income tax is calculated on an annual basis but declared on a monthly basis to the Chinese tax authorities. If a foreigner is deemed as a non-resident, um, then uh, his taxes will be calculated and declared on a monthly basis, which is the similar calculation method as of 2018 and in the past in China. This, however, also makes it a bit more complicated for HR departments to calculate effectively the, uh, the taxes for foreign expatriates and uh, requires more attention to this subject. Uh, furthermore, uh, what I would like to share about the uh, five-year tax break principle. Uh, in addition to uh, the tax residence regulations, foreign residents will still be able to enjoy the so-called five-year rule, but in a slightly different format. The five-year rule was a tax break principle for expatriates. According to this principle, expatriates can be exempt from paying taxes on their foreign sourced income if they left China for a specific amount of time during a five-year period namely either 30 consecutive days in a fiscal year or 90 cumulative days in a fiscal year. The new six-year rule preserves yet updates this tax break principle. The new regulations state that the foreign residents are obligated to pay taxes on their worldwide income 
if they spend over 183 days per year in China for six consecutive years. However, if the individual has left the country for 30 consecutive days or more in a single trip in one calendar year during the six year period, they can be exempt from paying tax in China over their foreign sourced income. Once an expatriate has left the country for 30 consecutive days, the six year period will be reset. It's important to note that such a trip must be filed in advance with the tax authorities in order to be eligible to enjoy this tax break principle. After the expatriate leaves China, the six year period will be reset. In addition, as of the introduction of this new legislation, the now six year period starts again from zero for all expatriates within China. Furthermore, what I would like to share with you is uh, the introduction in 2019 of the itemized deductions. The itemized deductions is the first uh, time that as well for local employees, uh, they are offered opportunities to further plan their individual income tax within China. I will not go uh, too much in depth in these itemized deductions, uh, but I will go a little bit quicker through this subject. Um, one of the first uh, deductions which are for local and foreign employees available is what is called the children's education expenses. Uh, these um, deductions um, can uh, in essence cover up to 1000 RMB per month for formal education for children. Uh, furthermore, continuing education um, is, uh, expenses is also a possibility that can be used which covers formal or professional education for adults. You can see as well in the table that uh, this is limited to 400 RMB per month and 3,600 RMB per year. Uh, furthermore, um, also uh, medical expenses for critical illness uh, can be used to uh, deduct the taxable income. Uh, only, uh, this can only be based on the actual expenses and this cannot exceed uh, 80,000 RMB. To continue, also interest expenses for mortgage can be deducted, but only for the first property you purchase. Furthermore, um, also uh, several categories of deductions have been introduced for housing rental, which you see uh, it's either 1,500 RMB per month, 1,100 uh, uh, RMB per month for uh, smaller cities, and 800 RMB for per month for very small cities within China. The last uh, itemized deduction that can also be used is the expenditure on dependent elderly, which is uh, maximum up to 2000 RMB per month. Um, as, as I already mentioned, uh, this uh, itemized deductions really opens up tax planning as well for Chinese PRC employees. Uh, furthermore, uh, expats can use these itemized deductions, but not in connection with the expat allowances, which they uh, could use already in the past within China. 2019 uh, also have shown further clarification on uh, the expatriate allowances and the preferential bonus calculation within China. Uh, according to the IIT reform, expats in China can still claim tax-exempt benefits until December 1st, December 31st, uh, 2021, such as meal allowance, housing allowance, laundry allowance, home flight allowance, and education allowance. Uh, foreigners can get these benefits if they provide a relevant FAPIAO for uh, these uh, type of uh, expenses they make. Uh, generally, this can be uh, an uh, be received tax-free uh, for an amount up to approximately 30% of the salary of the expat. However, this 30% uh, uh, ratio against the salary is not confirmed in tax law, but it is uh, confirmed in general practice how uh, tax authorities have dealt with these uh, benefits for expats in China. Uh, starting from 2022, uh, foreigners will need to use the itemized deductions same as for uh, the local employees, as just earlier explained. This will particularly have an impact on high-income expatriates. For instance, expats that have uh, three or four, uh, four children uh, have, uh, are renting a very expensive house. Uh, this will uh, quite increase their uh, individual income tax 
because the itemized deductions will not be able to cover these uh, expense amounts. Um, what is also important to share that specifically uh, the housing allowance, language training and children's education is discontinued. We will still have to await official guidance about relocation cost, home flight and laundry costs, but these are also expected to be ended. Furthermore, um, we've seen as well that the uh, special bonus calculation, the preferential bonus calculation uh, for foreign and local employees will be ended by December 31st, 2021. Uh, after uh, 2021, so starting from 2022, uh, the, uh, the bonus will be added to the comprehensive income. So on top of the annual salary of, uh, of the employee. So we see on the one hand, uh, there has been reductions in uh, taxes for foreign and local employees. But on the other hand, we see in the future, uh, there's expected there will be increases for certain type of employees or expatriates uh, within China. Next to the reforms on the actual individual income tax to be paid, also the individual income tax reforms have introduced uh, an increased level of scrutiny by the Chinese authorities, as well as new anti-avoidance rules to be introduced. For instance, in terms of level of scrutiny, uh, individuals are now required to file their trip in advance to order for, to benefit from the six-year rule. Also, example is individual taxpayers bear more responsibility for the information provided to obtain the benefits from the itemized deductions. Also, several anti-avoidance rules were introduced. I will not go further, further in depth in these uh, new rules, but this provides a more profound legal basis for the tax authorities to investigate and initiate tax adjustment and collect underpaid taxes. So the tax authorities with this IAT reform wants to also create a more stronger foundation uh, to obtain individual income taxes from employees within China. Bringing back uh, the reforms on the individual income tax within China, how does this impact EU SMEs within China or foreign SMEs within the Chinese market? So what are the positive developments? Um, the positive developments is really an increase of the net salary for lower income earners. The IIT itemized deductions, increase of the standard deduction, as well as uh, increase of the uh, lower end tax brackets really increases the net salary of uh, all employees within China and mostly lower income earners benefit from this. Furthermore, um, with these new regulations, companies will also be able to offer a lower growth as companies, as individuals will get the same uh, net salary uh, following uh, these, uh, this individual income tax reform. This is particularly interesting as uh, what we also see with a lot of Chamber of Commerce service coming back is that companies indicate salary costs are always increasingly uh, rising within China. Uh, to be able uh, to reduce uh, salary costs uh, by this is a positive development for uh, most companies within the Chinese market. Challenges for, uh, for the USMEs is uh, IIT management uh, will now become more complicated. Um, this is because of the IIT itemized deduction. This requires more coordination with local and HR departments as well as management of uh, taxes for foreigners within China as to calculate whether a foreigner is a non-resident or a tax resident within the Chinese market. Uh, furthermore, and, and this is going to be the major challenge, is the end of the expat benefits uh, as well as the end of the preferential bonus calculation. Especially the end of expat benefits uh, is really going to impact uh, foreign companies which have high level expatriates employed. Uh, for instance, for a uh, expatriate, as mentioned, which is here with a family of four and lives in a big, big house for a uh, large, uh, where the rent is quite high, um, this will quite increase the cost of this expatriate. So HR departments really have to uh, take notice of this development. Furthermore, this is not necessarily a negative thing, um, uh, as this. Uh, as this really increases the level playing field, but increased scrutiny on IT management 
uh, for companies that haven't managed this properly, uh, this uh, requires really more attention for them. If we're going forward, um, the thing that companies really need to take care of is the end of the expatriate benefits as well as the uh, bonus calculation that ends by uh, 2021. Uh, this can quite have an impact on the uh, foreign research allocation to the Chinese operations. Uh, and as well, and what we always see with a lot of regulatory updates, uh, we still expect many more reforms to come. Uh, what we've presented is uh, what is the case at this moment, uh, but as we know, uh, Chinese regulatory environment as well as environment and economic environment is always evolving quite a lot. This can still change um, in the future. Follow, following our insights about the individual income tax reform, now we'll continue the presentation to share more about the reforms on VAT in China. We've seen in 2019, again, many reforms have happened and we'll share with you the key highlights as we've also shared with our clients before and of which uh, they have all had a certain level of benefit. Before we dive into uh, VAT in China and its reforms, let me quickly update you again what is value-added tax. Value-added tax is the tax which is charged on the supply of goods and provision of service in China as well as the importation of goods in China. Within uh, China, VAT taxpayers are either classified as a, uh, classified as a small-scale taxpayer or a general VAT taxpayer. Small-scale taxpayers have, um, according to Chinese regulations, annual sales smaller than 5 million RMB in a, a fiscal year, whereas general taxpayers have annual sales greater than 5 million in a fiscal year. Small-scale taxpayers are also subject to a uh, lower tax rate. Uh, this is at 3% uh, VAT. However, on, uh, on the contrary, they are unable to subtract uh, input VAT or cost VAT from their sales VAT or output VAT. So they cannot deduct their VAT cost. Also, they are unable to print themselves VAT deductible expenses. For these type of VAT deductible expenses, they will have to apply for this at the local tax authority. Large scale taxpayers have uh, uh, different tax rates, which are 6%, which is mostly for services, 9% mostly for agricultural goods and other types of goods, and 13% uh, for um, most categories of goods and uh, other types of uh, special services. Um, Large-scale taxpayers, on the contrary, they are able to deduct their VAT costs or their input VAT from their sales VAT as well uh, to make uh, direct, directly deductible VAT invoices for their clients. Uh, general, to be a general taxpayer is particularly interesting for companies that have a lot of cost VAT. Uh, companies that have a lot of cost VAT are companies that are mostly active within the trading and the manufacturing industry. In 2019, uh, we've seen uh, many types of reforms coming into place. What we're going to highlight for you today is uh, the change of the taxpayer status, uh, what is now possible in 2019, a raising of the VAT thresholds, uh, new reduced uh, VAT rates, changes for input VAT in China, introduction of a VAT super credit, and a VAT refund pilot scheme criteria for claiming excess input VAT. All these different highlighted reforms have benefited uh, also our clients in uh, the recent months and we find it worth for you to share and see if this could also impact your business within China. In terms of the VAT reforms in 2019, we'd like to share that since 2019, it's also possible for a general VAT taxpayer to, uh, to change back to a small scale taxpayer. This would mean that instead of a VAT rate of uh, 13, 9, and 6%, these companies would be subject to a VAT rate of 3%. It's important to note that these firm firms would no longer be able to subtract input VAT from output VAT. As a result, this may be, uh, be appealing for European businesses 
with uh, few cost or input VAT, which have less than 5 million RMB uh, revenue uh, and are a general VAT taxpayer at the moment. As we've seen as well, uh, for one of our clients within China, this uh, changing of a general VAT taxpayer to a small-scale taxpayer has really benefited them quite a bit. Uh, in connection as well to changing the taxpayer status, uh, also the VAT thresholds are increased, which means that uh, previously uh, the exemption amount for small-scale taxpayers was 30,000 RMB uh, for monthly sales. This has now been increased for monthly sales up to 100,000 RMB. So this makes it for some companies, uh, again, more interesting to change their taxpayer status from a general VAT taxpayer to a small-scale taxpayer. Other interesting uh, reforms on VAT in 2019 are the reduced VAT rates as well as the expanded scope for input VAT within China. In terms of the uh, reduced VAT rates for taxable sales activities and import of goods, which are currently subject to 16 and 10 percent, the applicable VAT rates are reduced to 13 and 9 percent, respectively. Uh, for export goods, which are currently subject to 16 percent, a VAT and VAT refund of 16 percent, the VAT refund will be adjusted to 13 percent. For exported goods and cross-border services, which are currently subject to 10% VAT, and a VAT refund of 10%, the VAT refund will be adjusted to 9%. So this will be interesting for companies really selling in China, but might be a bit less interesting for companies which are only focused on exporting from uh, the Chinese market, as they will receive a, uh, a lesser VAT refund when exporting goods. In terms of uh, the expanded scope for input VAT, um, also the reforms for, uh, on VAT uh, introduce an expansion in the scope for credible input VAT for real estate and transportation services. For real estate, general VAT taxpayers can claim input VAT credit for the purchase of real estate and construction services upfront and can, could thus be directly deducted from output VAT. This will mean that general VAT taxpayers will no longer have to claim input VAT credit for this category over a two-year period. Uh, furthermore, and this is the most interesting for most uh, companies, uh, for the transportation services, the new VAT policy also allows general VAT taxpayers to claim input VAT credit for domestic Chinese passenger transport services which can subsequently be credited against output VAT. Special VAT invoices, electronic general VAT invoices and airplane, train, bus and ship tickets with the passenger name would qualify as a certificate for domestic transportation. So these certificates can then be used to claim deductions for the VAT. So this will over, overall will reduce uh, the VAT cost for the companies. We would also like to, to share more about the VAT super credit, which has been introduced in 2019. Uh, as from 1st of April 2019 to 31st of December 2021, several businesses may be able to claim what is called the 10% super credit. This super credit can be deducted from the VAT payable. Uh, for instance, a company has uh, 100 uh, input VAT uh, with the super credit, they will have 110 input VAT that can be deducted from their VAT payable and uh, any remaining amount can be transferred to the next filing period for credit. In order to qualify for the, uh, for the super credit, uh, VAT uh, taxpayers must obtain more than 50% of their total revenue from the specific, specific industry category, as I mentioned below, in uh, the 12 months prior to their claim. These uh, industry categories, as you can see uh, below, are mostly in the services domain. Uh, we can share that clients from us from these uh, that are active in these industries have uh, 
been able to get good benefit uh, from these developments. Finally, uh, I would also like to share that in 2019, uh, also the VAT refunds pilot scheme has been introduced. Uh, according to the Chinese VAT system in the past years, businesses were not able to claim refunds for access input VAT. Instead, businesses were only able to carry the access input VAT forward to offset future output VAT. Following the recent reform on the VAT, uh, taxpayers who have incremental uncredited input VAT can request a refund. Taxpayers are entitled to a VAT rough refund only if they meet the following criteria. Uh, starting from April uh, uh, 2019, incremental uncredited input VAT must remain positive for six consecutive months or two consecutive quarters, and the total amount is no less than 500,000 RMB. The taxpayer is a class A or class B taxpayer in the Chinese tax credit system, uh, and as well the taxpayer has a good conduct in the past 36 months meaning no engagement in tax deception or punishment by the tax authorities for tax evasion more than twice. So this it could also uh, be a benefit for foreign SMEs uh, or foreign companies within the Chinese market. So how do these uh, VAT developments, these VAT reforms impact USMEs within China? Overall, we observe that many businesses will save costs due to reduction of VAT rates, the VAT super credit, change from general VAT taxpayer to small scale taxpayer, and raising of the VAT exemption thresholds. However, companies that are really focused on the exportation of goods might be able to claim a lower VAT refund following the reforms. Um, overall, we see that the changes of the VAT rates uh, mostly impacts as a means that, for instance, can change to a small-scale taxpayers and companies from the service sector, which are able to uh, claim the VAT super credit. We see that particularly these uh, VAT reforms are really uh, interesting for the lower end, really to support SMEs within the Chinese market, which includes as well uh, European SMEs that can take use of these uh, new developments within China. Now we will share more about the reduction of uh, corporate income tax for SMEs within China. This is a less detailed um, new regulation, but still very interesting for European SMEs within China and impacts as well mostly, if not all, SMEs um, within the Chinese market. Before uh, we go into this topic, let me first explain a little bit more of what is corporate income tax. Corporate income tax, uh, the corporate income tax law within China has become effective since 1st of January 2008 in China and all enterprises in China are subject to it. Both local and foreign companies are subject to a uniform tax rate of 25%. Below you see here as well uh, the formula which is used how to calculate corporate income tax within China. In 2018, a policy was in place um, that companies with a taxable income smaller than 1 million RMB are exempt from paying corporate income tax over 50% of their taxable income, whereas the other 50% would be taxed at 20%. This would apply an effective corporate income tax rate of 10%. However, uh, if uh, the uh, taxable income would be above 1 million RMB, so 1 million, 1 RMB, all revenue would become taxable at 25% CIT rate. In 2019, this reform has been widened. In 2019, uh, if uh, companies uh, have a taxable income under 1 million RMB, they are exempt from paying CIT on 75% of their taxable income. The remaining 25% is subject to 20% CIT, which brings the effective tax rate down to 5%. As mentioned, this rate was before 10%, uh, as, in, as is used in 2018. Uh, companies that have a taxable income between 1 million RMB and up to 3 million RMB are exempt from paying CIT on 50% of their taxable income. 
the remaining 50% is subject to 20% CIT, which brings the effective tax rate down to 10%, um, 10 CIT to be paid. If the taxable income is above 3 million RMB, um, then uh, there's no exemption range, range as well as the uh, tax rate will be 25% uh, on all taxable income. If you look again, what is the impact on the EOS SMEs uh, in China of this reform? Um, important first to share is um, the reductions of corporate income tax is really primarily aimed at encouraging SMEs and low profit enterprises. Also, uh, prov provincial governments were given the option to provide other tax incentives for small scale enterprises, but this is based on a provincial level. Uh, the implementation period for these tax reductions is set for three years, from 2019 to 2022. Uh, it's important uh, to take notice this, uh, this is a, a temporary uh, policy, but uh, it's at this moment not able to predict uh, how this will be changed in the future, where the, whether this will be extended, uh, will, will, whether the new policy will be more beneficial or, uh, or not. Uh, this is something future can only tell. Um, furthermore, it's um, also important for um, SMEs to very carefully monitor their taxable income to make sure that this, for smaller uh, EU SMEs, that this remains under 3 million RMB, else, um, else the uh, tax burden can be significantly increased. Overall, we do see that this. Um, reduction of corporate income tax, uh, the special policy up to 2022 is really good news for local as well as European SMEs within the Chinese market. So if we bring all these reforms together, uh, what, what does this really mean? Uh, we really see with all these reforms, the central government is really trying to introduce a more unified, clear and modern tax regime in China and as well, on the other hand, stimulate the local economy. The developments on the major taxes really mostly benefit SMEs in China. The developments on the VAT really uh, helps, uh, helps SMEs, including European SMEs, uh, as well companies from the services sector. Uh, the reductions on uh, individual income tax and the introduction on the IIT itemized deduction also lowers uh, the taxable income for local and foreign employees, as well as the CIT reductions are very interesting for SMEs, local and foreign within the market. However, challenges is really the end of the expatriate allowances by the 31st of December, uh, 2021. This will really significantly impact companies employing senior level expatriates. So it's important for HR departments uh, to already take notice of these uh, coming developments. Furthermore, increased scrutiny, which I mentioned is not necessarily a bad thing as this increases as well level playing field within the market, but as well more responsibility on IIT management increases workloads for local HR departments. Furthermore, for some companies that are exporting in a market, uh, the reduction of the export uh, rebates might uh, have a negative impact for their business. If we uh, really conclude, uh, bring our conclusion to all these developments, uh, we really believe that as the structure of the Chinese economy is changing uh, as well by internal forces, uh, as in uh, the change of the Chinese market to more consumption driven market, as well as the current international relations with, between China and uh, foreign trading blocks as the United States and the European market, we are expecting still to see many more reforms and changes in the coming months and years to come. It's therefore very important for businesses to keep being updated and keep following these uh, developments very closely to make sure they can benefit and to make sure they mitigate the challenges from new reforms for their business. Uh, this was my presentation about the subject. I would like to thank you very much for listening in. If you have any questions about the presentation, feel free to contact us or share your questions in the comment section of this presentation. Thank you very much and um, have a nice day.